Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He brought everything into existence by the power of his word. And then on the sixth day of creation, he created mankind. God formed Adam of the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life. And the man then became a living creature. Later, he made Eve from the rib of Adam. At this point, everything was very good. There was no sin and no death. God did not create us from the dust of the ground or from a rib. Rather, God used a husband and a wife to bring forth life. God gave you life from the womb of your mother, and God sustains your life with daily bread. He also sustains your faith in Christ with a gift of eternal life, the precious gospel. God is a giver of all good gifts. Verse 8 of our Old Testament reading, uh, Old Testament lesson reads, And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden. Incidentally, this is one of my favorite Bible passages, God planted a garden. I'm supposed to laugh. <laughs> the Garden of Eden was perfect. There were no weeds, no bugs, no disease. There was plenty of food for Adam and Eve to for Adam and Eve to eat in the Garden of Eden. And there were four rivers, and God had four rivers that went through the garden in order to give moisture uh, to, 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 to the Garden of Eden. Adam was called to work it and keep it, Scripture says. This work was not burdensome or heavy for Adam. Adam, uh, It didn't cause the sweat in the brow as he worked in the Garden of Eden. It was a joy for Adam to work there in the garden. Adam was God's steward managing the Garden of Eden. So also, we are... Uh, our stewards, we are God's steward, faithfully managing that which is entrusted to our care. In the midst of the garden was the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil. God said to Adam, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So Adam and Eve were to eat from the one tree, but not from the other. The tree of life sustained them, but, but they were not to eat from the forbidden tree. You may ask, why did God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden anyways? Why did God put a, in the garden an opportunity for man to mess up? Couldn't? Couldn't a lot of trouble be avoided if the tree wasn't there? Now the answer is that when Adam and Eve ate from the, the tree of life and did not eat from the forbidden tree, this showed forth their faith and love toward God. God is love. And there's a special relationship between God and Adam and Eve. And so God had an opportunity for Adam and Eve to show forth their faith and love toward him by eating from the one and not eating from the other. Martin Luther said, This tree was Adam's church, altar, and pulpit. Here he was to yield to God the obedience he owed, give recognition to the word and will of God, give thanks to God and call upon God, Adam demonstrated his reverence and obedience toward God by not eating anything from it. And so also for us, when we gather here every Sunday to hear God's word, to confess our sin, to receive the forgiveness of sins, to receive the gospel and the sacrament, it shows forth our faith and love toward God. But when we neglect the hearing of God's word and the reception of the gospel, it shows forth our sin and unbelief. 
Well, in due time, Satan tempted Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. He said that if she ate the forbidden fruit, that she would not die. This is a flat-out lie. Satan lies even today. He says that the Bible is not God's word. He says that baptism does not save. Satan says that the, that the, uh, that, that the bread and wine cannot be Christ's body and blood. He says that we all have evolved from animals. He says that life in the womb is disposable. He says that marriage can be between anyone, anyone, anything. The devil says that destroying other people's property and reputation is fine. And the list goes on and on. Jesus said of the devil that he is the father of lies. And there is no truth in him. Unfortunately, Eve listened to Satan. She ate that forbidden fruit. She gave some to her husband also, and he ate. And of their own free will, they listened to Satan. Sin and death has now entered our world. Sin is a turning away from God. Sin prevents us from looking to God for security, for meaning, for righteousness, our sinful nature then causes all kinds of acts of sin, such as thoughts, desires, words, and deeds that are contrary to God's will. Unfortunately, we are programmed to sin. God once said to Adam regarding the forbidden fruit, For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. In Romans Chapter 5, verse 12 says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, namely Adam, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. And our epistle lesson for today said that the wages of sin is death. And so the result of our sin is death. The consequence of our sin is death. Now, death here means both spiritual and physical. When Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, they did not immediately die physically. That came later on. But they now experience a fallen nature. We see the example of this fallen nature in Adam's reaction after he sinned. What did he do? He was hiding from God in the, in, in, amongst the trees. And secondly, he blamed, he blamed his wife. Before the fall into sin, he had faith and love toward God, and he, and he loved his wife. But you see what sin has now done to Adam and to each and every one of us. We do the same thing. We blame God for our problems. We blame others. We want to get our way, even if it means hurting other people. We listen to Satan's lies. We question God's word. We don't hide from God among the trees in the garden, but we absent ourselves from the divine service, neglecting God's word. The wages of sin is death. Currently, we are moving closer and closer to our physical death. We are getting older and older. We are experiencing sickness and aging. Our bodies are wearing out. Death will come to us someday. We don't know when. We don't know how. We need help. We need someone to rescue us from sin and death. We need the forgiveness of sins. And we need the gift of eternal life. And God heard our prayer. And he sent his only begotten son to be our savior. The, son of, the God of all creation has taken upon himself human flesh. He was not formed out of the dust of the ground or from a rib. But rather Jesus was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary apart from the aid of a man. Jesus was born under the law in order to redeem us who are under the law. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he was tempted by the devil three times in the wilderness, like our gospel to, for today. But Jesus never gave in. The first temptation was about bread, food. 
like our Holy Gospel mentioned. But Jesus responded by saying that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, bread is important, yes, to be sure, but the word of God is very important. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he reversed the effects of sin by giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, deaf, and he even raised the dead. In our Holy Gospel for today, Jesus performed a wonderful miracle. He miraculously multiplied enough bread and fish to feed the crowd of over 4,000 people. Jesus did not need to grow the wheat and grind the wheat and bake the bread. He just spoke and bread came into being a wonderful miracle. And in the middle of the wilderness, Jesus provided enough food to feed the multitude. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he taught the people, he preached, and his words were words of eternal life. He spoke peace and hope. In our gospel for today, Jesus first taught the crowd, fed them with the word of God for three days, and then he fed them with bread and fish. So both the word of God and food were involved in our gospel for today. So also for us, God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, pointing us to Christ alone as our Savior. In God's word, we learn God's will for our lives and how to love God and the neighbor. In the word of God, we learn and receive the the precious gospel for the forgiveness of our sins. In the word of God, we learn about God as our creator, that he redeemed us with his own blood, and that he has made us holy, giving us faith in Christ and his righteousness. God's word guides us. It gives us peace. It is very, very important in our lives. Our epistle lesson for today says that the wages of sin is death, but it goes on to say that the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Notice the difference in terminology. The first half of the verse talks about wages, Whereas the second half talks about a gift. The first half talks about what we earned, namely death. And the second half talks about what, uh, uh, talks about what Christ has freely gives us, namely eternal life. Our working has led to death, but Christ's, God's working leads us to eternal life through his son. Christ's death upon the cross, then, was the payment for your sin. Jesus suffered the wrath of God in your place. And the wages of sin, your, the wages of your sin is death, the death of Christ upon the cross. The cause of your sin resulted in Christ's death. Jesus took the wages you had coming and died for you and in your place. The cross, then, is your tree of life. Three days later, Jesus defeated our enemy, death, and he rose from the dead, and he lives forevermore. Therefore, you are reconciled to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5 verse 19 says, says that because of Adam's disobedience, the many were made sinners. But it goes on to say that because of Jesus' obedience, the many will be made righteous. Because of Jesus' cross and resurrection, you are declared righteous, not guilty on account of Christ. Therefore, the free gift of eternal life is yours through faith in Christ. And because of Jesus' sacrifice, the gift of of life now flows to you and to all who believe in him. Death and hell have been taken away and defeated. You have been given new life, free and full, through the resurrection of Christ. You are no longer slaves of sin. Our epistle lesson says that you are now set free from sin, namely free from its condemnation. You now present your members as slaves of righteousness leading to sanctification, and you are slaves of God, namely freely and joyfully doing the will of God for the sake of the neighbor. In the Garden of Eden, 
God freely gave Adam and Eve an abundance of food without any, without any work, hard work on their part. In the wilderness, so also Jesus freely gave to the crowd enough bread and fish without any work on their part. So also God in Christ Jesus freely gives you grace and mercy, forgiveness and righteousness, eternal life without any work on your part. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of life and did not eat from the forbidden tree, they showed forth their faith and love toward God. This morning, Jesus gives us the fruit of the tree of the cross. Our resurrected Lord freely gives us his body and blood under bread and wine, and it is for the forgiveness of sins. And where there is forgiveness, there is life and salvation. The fruit from the tree of the cross sustains us on our journey to heaven. And so God is a giver of all good gifts of both body and soul, our daily bread and the gift of eternal life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus in the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>